This is Ronak Vyas and this video is a collaboration with Programming Knowledge. In this video, we'll talk about how we can use lead code effectively for software engineering interviews and how we can get the most out of this website to help with our uh, interview preparation. So let's start with the basics. First of all, what is lead code? So lead code is a website where you can practice your interview, uh, practice for your upcoming interviews. Uh, most uh, commonly for software engineering interviews, but doesn't have to be uh, software engineering in general. It can also be a front-end position, a back-end position, or anything uh, in that same neighborhood. And usually, uh, lead code is used to practice data structures and algorithms and problems associated with that. Uh, but along with that, you also have databases, operating systems, and system design available on the website but it is most commonly uh, used and is famous for uh, learning uh, and preparing for data structures and algorithms whiteboarding interviews. So in this video, we'll talk about how we can use that website uh, effectively and what are some tips which I have, which I have acquired from uh, my colleagues, my seniors from college and a lot of articles uh, around the internet and people globally as well. So I've tried to consolidate all of that information into a single video so that you know uh, this video can help you get started right away uh, to prepare for your software engineering interviews. So uh, one assumption which this video makes is that uh, you know the basics of a programming language and you are preparing for your next uh, internship or your next uh, job interview and you're looking for a place where you can actually get better at data structures and algorithms. So let's get started. First we'll start with some very general tips which apply to any kind of preparation in general, not just specific to lead code. Uh, you can, uh, using any tool, any website uh, can be uh, applied with these general tips. So let's uh, see that first. So the first tip uh, is basically that consistency is key. You want to start as much in advance as you can and do it daily. Uh, doing it for one hour a day is better than doing it for seven hours on Sunday only. So. Uh, one thing which a lot of people and uh, even including me have made a mistake is that uh, we think that we can actually you know prepare if you're busy uh, uh, on weekdays we can use weekends to prepare for interviews we can cram four to five hours on the weekends to actually prepare and you know actually get better at it but uh, you need to know that consistency is important because you are uh, actually learning something which is not easy to learn uh, when you actually learn stacks queues priority queues trees graphs uh, DP, they are not easy concepts. They cannot be done in one sitting. Uh, some people can, but usually it takes some time to build those and internalize those concepts inside your mind. So you need to be consistent with the preparation. Uh, you don't have to do it uh, for one day, seven hours and you're done. Uh, just give one hour a day, do just one problem a day and uh, just make sure you're consistent as much as possible and start today, I would say. Like, don't wait uh, finding you don't have to wait for a day or two just watch the video uh, it has some general roadmap do that follow it keep that in mind and start solving your questions today and uh, you'll be good to go in a month or two next the next is focusing on active improvement so this means that if you're an autopilot or if you're not focusing then it's okay to just stop and come back later so these problems, uh, we usually do these problems because we want to prepare for your white for our whiteboard interviews, right? And these interviews happen with a person standing, uh, standing or sitting with you, uh, with a whiteboard where you're discussing a problem together and you're actually trying to solve a problem together, where you're doing more the solving and he's just you know looking at you solve it. So, uh, in this scenario, uh, in that interview scenario, you are actually actively thinking of a question and you're actively solving one. So why shouldn't that reflect in your practicing uh, sessions as well? So don't just solve questions or prepare for the heck of it. Uh, don't uh, do it without uh, knowing what you're doing, just you know, doing it randomly, passively. Make sure that you're actively uh, looking at the question actively uh, and understanding it, focusing on it. And if you're not, uh, if you're having a bad day, if you're just not feeling up to it, if you're tired, if you've done your job and you're not, not uh, motivated enough to do it, it's okay to just stop, come back later, come back a day or two after that or take a weekend or I would just say take a holiday as well. But make sure that when you're learning, uh, you're doing it actively and you're just not doing it passively or just for the heck of it. So the last tip, a last general tip which I have is that 
uh, everybody is different uh, everybody learns at a different pace everybody has different styles of learning but there is no one size fits all here so feel free to deviate from this or any guide that you know such youtube videos have you'll find a lot of how to use read code effectively videos on youtube you don't have to uh, follow any of it but try what suit try what is best for you and keep doing that until you reach your goal that is a very general thing which i wanted to say okay so now let's get on to lead code specific tips so uh, something which i usually follow and a lot of people follow is that uh, sort by acceptance rate so go to problems and then solve by sort by acceptance rate uh, not by the easy hard uh, uh, mechanism because problems with high acceptance rates are relatively easier among the pool of easy problems as well so uh, when you when, uh, people who are able to solve those problems or you know get an acceptance faster than they get you know wrong answers those problems uh, you you have actually higher chance of solving them fast and that actually gives you a feedback loop where you you know feel happy that you know you're able to solve it and you actually are motivated to solve the next one so sort by acceptance rates and keep doing it because that is a better uh, identifier of the problems difficulty than easy medium hard so next uh, try to solve the problems with no hints at least with brute force solutions so again we are trying to do this or we are doing this because we want to do better during our whiteboard face to face in person or even telephonic interviews and during those times you will uh, you will actually have to give a solution or you know think of a solution uh, before you actually ask for hints usually uh, if it's an easy problem so uh, whenever you are uh, hit with the problem during your technical interviews make sure that you first uh, try to solve the problems with the brute force solution or you know give the interviewer a brute force solution to work with so why should not that be incorporated into your normal preparations as well so whenever you're solving a problem on lead code uh, given whatever the constraints given what are the constraints first solve the problem without looking at hints with any brute force solution that you have anything any simple brute force solution that solves the problem in a very you know uh, naive way but still does the work do that uh, you get an accepted uh, run that and you might get a tle or a time but exceeded but that's fine it's because you know you will op you will be optimizing it but the key is here the key here is that every time uh, you have an interview you want to communicate with the interviewer you want to keep talk speaking your mind and uh, vocalize what you are thinking right so first you always start with a brute force solution and that is all the problem and only after that you ask for a hint uh, you know you think of a much more optimized solution uh, a very 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 important uh, tip which i have here is that it is tempting but not at all helpful to abuse the run button which you have on lead code Uh, try the easy ones with a goal to get accepted on the first submission since this is this more realistically models a wide board situation it forces you to think of all the use cases yourself so one of the major mistakes that i made during my interview preparation was that i used to uh, change uh, a variable change a for loop change some logic into my code when i'm solving lead code questions then uh, just uh, run the code mindlessly uh, to see whether i've actually passed the problem or not this was usually because of frustration because you know i was trying to solve problem was not able to solve one but in a real world situation this is not how it's going to be right you will not be having an unlimited uh, number of chances to press a run button to actually see if your code is working or not so uh, try to stop yourself from uh, using the run button and try to minimize the amount of usage of that button as well uh, always make sure that you want to get the accepted uh get the solution accepted in one go because you know it forces you to think that you know okay so i need i just have one chance to run this what am i missing and when you think of that you think of all the edge cases all the use cases for yourself and you're able to actually think uh, much more better than you usually would if you just you know abuse or click run multiple multiple times so make sure that you first take a step back take a piece of paper uh, write down the pseudo code write down what you're thinking uh, speak your thoughts out loud i would say and then when you are actually confident write uh, the edge cases first handle them then write your main logic then again uh, give it a read uh, do a dry run uh, or you know uh, talk to the duck and once you are uh, confident only then run your uh, submission and see if it's uh, ex being accepted or not if it's not don't worry uh, that is actually the best way to learn 
or uh, if you try this if you are you know uh, trying this diligently and if it's still not working that's a good thing because then you have something to learn and that's going to ha- only help you and not you know uh, be use something against you so if you're not able to solve it in one go don't worry just keep trying and uh, trust the process and you will be able to solve it in one go great so the next is study how the top solutions apply the tricks to improve performance so lead code has this really really nice uh way to show you how fast your submission was uh, 90% than other solutions comparing to other people so uh, one thing what you have what you can do is after you solve a solution is that go to discuss or go to your you know a graph which shows uh, what the top solutions are and see what they have done so uh, one downside here is that a lot of people on lead code have this bad habit where they write unreadable code and really short code way of solving the question just to get that you know uh, best performance uh, i don't know why but that is not how a real interview is right a real interview has code which is readable has code which is simple for the interview to understand and simple for you to write not complicated or sophisticated at all in terms of you know how you use variables how you actually have the flow so read the top solutions which have good readability see how they have actually named their variables see how they have used loops how they have used flags uh, how they have used two pointers uh, what kind of techniques they use uh, what was missing in your thinking that they have actually implemented and make a note of that very important whenever you see a solution that is better than you see the solutions and actually incorporate what you were missing inside your solution okay so that were some very simple basic uh, tips which i had with lead code and also with uh, general faq now let's come to the most frequently asked question uh, when it comes to lead code or uh, interview preparation which i have asked a lot of people a lot of my seniors my colleagues on the internet as well and uh, i found a really nice answer on lead code discuss which you know i want to share here and the link for all of this will be in the description below so how much time should i give to think on a problem before i head on to the editorial or look for some kind of help or a clue if i get stuck with a problem so you know uh, i was struggling with this question myself because uh, there were some times where i was able to solve a problem in 2 minutes sometimes a very easy problem would take more than half an hour or more than even one hour and i would just feel like giving up or just you know having that temptation to click that solution page and you know just look at it and just get done with it but let's see what the answer for this is so uh, yeah i was just see seeing which uh, if i have the slide or not so uh, what you usually do here is that uh, whenever uh, you are solving a question you are trying to mimic or trying your best to mimic a real world interview scenario and in a real world interview for an easy question you might have around 20 to 30 minutes to solve it and for a medium or a hard question you might have up to 1 hour maximum so in a real interview that is the kind of time you will have to solve these questions so that is the data which you need to use inside your uh, preparation so take a timer put that timer for 20 minutes when you're solving easy questions and try your best to solve it under that time if you're not able to solve it don't worry don't look at the solution yet uh, just keep trying for an hour but if you're not able to solve it in an hour please look at the solution uh, see that and one when you look at a solution make a note of it in an excel file uh, in a notes app anywhere and come back to it come back to it every week so this is something is called as spaced repetition where uh, it is really hard for our mind to internalize concepts which we do not know about so if you do not know how to solve a problem uh, you will not be able to understand it or get it in one go unless you are really talented so you will need to keep coming back to the problem to understand the concept to actually inter- internalize the pattern in which uh, the problem was being solved whether the problem you used dp or a two pointer technique or something on trees used to try so why did you use it what was the reason why we used this or why did we actually use this one so for these answers you need to look at the solution make a note of the solution come back to it after a week try the problem again without looking at it and if you are able to solve good you can just you know move on with the day if you are not look at the solution again and keep doing this until you are able to solve the problem you know by yourself and once you once you're confident that you are able to solve the problem for 2 3 weeks or a month straight without looking at this editorial remove that from your notes app or excel file and you know keep going for the next ones so this is something which 
has helped me a lot in understanding or internalizing concepts from lead code and something which a lot of people think is uh, useless but for me it was really 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 helpful because it helps you keep track of your weak points or your weak areas and also uh, it you feel really happy when you actually were able to solve a problem which you know you were not able to solve before so uh, keep doing that and you'll be good to go so from the next video onwards we'll actually solve some top interview questions uh, from lead code and see how we can discuss the problems and solutions uh, on youtube as well so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one